Hey guys, welcome back to the Southern Rustic. So in today's video, I decided to do something different today and share with you two recipes. One is very, very simple and it wouldn't have been a very long video for you to watch. So I just thought I would add in a, another recipe to go along with it. So in today's video, we're gonna be making my Chipotle Buffalo Chicken Bites. And we're gonna be making buttermilk and cream cheese mashed potatoes. And they are both absolutely delicious. And that is also what we're gonna be having for dinner tonight. Every recipe that I make, I serve my family. So you guys know that what I make on this channel is what we eat. So let's go over the ingredients for both recipes and let's get right on into it, guys. Okay guys, for the mashed potatoes, you're going to need za'atar. Now this is a spice that I absolutely love. If you don't have it or if you cannot find it, you can totally skip it. Lowry's seasoned salt, cream cheese, butter, potatoes that I've got just soaking in a little bit of water just to get some excess uh, starch from the potatoes. I've got milk. You may or may not need this depending on how many potatoes you have. But I just have it out just in case. Also, you're going to need buttermilk and salt and pepper. That is what you're going to need for the mashed potatoes. And now for the chicken, you're also going to need salt and pepper. You're going to need chicken. This is just uh, chicken tenderloins that I have cut up into about two inch pieces. You're going to need one to two chipotle peppers that I've just minced up with a little bit of sauce one egg, about a cup of flour. You're also gonna need garlic powder and onion powder, butter, we're gonna melt this later, and your favorite brand of hot sauce. So that is everything you're gonna need, guys. Let's get right on into it. Okay, before I begin, I want to do each recipe individually, so that way we're not everywhere and you get confused later on in the video of what ingredients need to go where. So we're gonna start out with the mashed potatoes because we can let the, the mashed potatoes sit and develop the flavors while we make our chicken. So let's start that first and then we'll move right on into the chicken. Okay guys, for the potatoes, we're just going to add our potatoes into a dry pot. You can use however many potatoes you want. Now you're just going to add in enough water to cover the potatoes. And that should be good. Turn your heat on medium and you're just going to let these cook now do not salt your potatoes now it will cause uneven cooking in the potatoes some will be hard some will still be half raw so you want to let these cook by themselves until they are completely tender in the meantime we are going to marinate our chicken this is going to be the only thing we do until we start this process after the uh, mashed potatoes are done. So what you're gonna do is just crack in an egg, add a little bit of salt, and a little bit of pepper. And you're going to mix this until it's very well combined. If you don't like to fill up eggs, you can certainly use a glove or a spoon, it doesn't really bother me. So I'm just going to mix this until everything is well combined. Okay, now that these are well combined, just cover these with a plastic wrap or just a plate and let them sit until you're ready to use them. Okay guys, I'm just checking on my potatoes and they are tender. Now to know how they're tender is one you can pretty much see that they're kind of falling apart. Now you don't want to cook them too long, but if you just take it and kind of poke it with a knife or a spoon and your spoon or knife it goes in goes through it easily, they're done. So I'm just going to cut this off. I'm going to drain them, put them back in my pot, 
and mash them and I'll meet you right back here to show you the next step. Okay guys, I have gone ahead and mashed them up. Now as you see, I have left the skin on. You certainly don't have to do that. You can peel your potatoes, it's completely fine. It's iffy with me, sometimes I like it in there, sometimes I don't, but today I just left them in there. Now you're just going to add in about two tablespoons of butter. Some salt and pepper. I would start out with a little bit of salt because you can always add more later if it's not enough. Add in your cream cheese and your buttermilk. Now for spices, you can add in about a half of a teaspoon of za'atar. You certainly don't have to add it in. If you cannot find it, it's fine. You can skip it. And about a half of a teaspoon of seasoning salt. And now we're just going to mix this together just to see where we are. We may or may not have to add the milk. We We'll see where we are in just a minute. And it looks like we're gonna have to add a little bit more. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and add this. This is about a third of a cup of milk. Now you can always add more or less to your preference, whichever one thick or thin that you like. Just go ahead and do that. Make sure it's well combined and then just check it for seasoning just, in, just to see if you need more salt or pepper. Add a little bit more salt. Mix that together. And then we will give it a, another try. That's perfect. So now what I'm going to do is uh, place a lid on it, set it on the stove. It'll stay warm while we cook our chicken. Okay guys, moving on to the chicken. We're going to make the sauce for the chicken. I've got about a half of a stick of butter that I just melted and cooled. my hot sauce my chipotle peppers in adobo sauce I'm going to add just a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper and I'm just going to give this a mix just until everything is thoroughly combined because we will be tossing the chicken in this sauce later. Now we're just going to set this aside and I will show you what to do with the flour. This is what we're going to be coating our chicken in. Just add a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, about a teaspoon of onion powder. and about a teaspoon of garlic powder. And just give this a mix. Okay guys, I've got just a little six inch pan here. If you want to use a bigger pan, you can. And I just put um, some oil in the pan, about a half an inch up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to bread the chicken and then just drop them down into the oil as I go and I have a paper towel lined plate over here that I'm going to drain them in
Now you don't want your heat up too high. You want it just enough to cook it through without burning the outside of the chicken. So about medium to medium low is good. If you want to bake these, you can. You can just um, do the exact same step. Spray them with a little bit of cooking spray and pop them in a 350 degree oven until they are all cooked through. Now it does not take long for these to cook. You want to keep an eye on them because they will burn rather quickly if your oil is too hot. But you do want them to get golden brown. So you should be able to tell when they're ready to flip when they are cooked halfway through. And then you can just go ahead and flip them over and let them cook on the other side. For two to three minutes or until they're completely cooked through. So, I'm going to go ahead and get all of these done and I will meet you right back here for the next step. Okay guys, I've got my chicken all done. I just put them on a paper towel lined plate so they can drain off the excess oil. Now we're just going to put them in here. Just add them all right in here. We'll set that aside. Okay, now what you're going to do is just gently toss these together. Until they are all well mixed and combined. It might take you a second or two, but just be patient. Okay, guys, the breading has pretty much absorbed mostly all of that sauce. So now you're ready to go. So I'm just gonna plate this up and I'll meet you right back here. Okay guys, I'm all done. It is all plated up and we are ready to go. I'm just going to try one at a time. So first I'm going to try the chicken. Mmm. It's not too spicy. It's just spicy enough. Um, you can certainly add more hot sauce or more chipotle peppers if you want to kick it up in a spice, which is completely fine. Um, I think it's good like it is. It's got the nice breading on the outside and that sauce just soaks up in there so well. And it's just a wonderful flavor. And these potatoes. I love these potatoes. I make these potatoes a lot. Um, because my family loves them. It's so simple ingredients. I know it's not the most healthiest meal in the world. But it is so good. And they're so creamy and light. Just top it with some green onions and you're good to go. Mmm, so good. And you can pair that with any vegetable that you want. It goes well with anything. Normally I would serve it with um, broccoli, some steamed broccoli with some lemon juice over the top with salt and pepper. Good to go. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Hit that red subscribe button down below and be part of the family here at the Southern Rustic. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.